there, I'm the Holy Bleach, and today I'll be reading a Sander Side fan fanfiction called Songs Remain in Stricken Silence by Coconut Cluster, and the summary is, in the midst of an environmental apocalypse, Roman thinks back on how it all started. The church bells used to ring in the morning. Roman remembered them clearly, even now, even after everything. He remembered waking up always before Remus and their parents, sometimes before the sun rose, and eating breakfast on the porch, closing his eyes to feel the morning breeze brush his face, and in the distance, at six and noon on the dot, the bells would ring out from the church a few blocks away. It was an old church, with bells you had to manually pull ropes to play. The sound was almost haunting when the rest of the world was silent, but Remus liked the way it carried across the rooftops to him. It was like a song played just for him, a way to know that, no matter what, someone was out there ringing a bell to tell him the new day had begun, that everything would be alright. But things hadn't been alright for a while now. He didn't need a song to know that. They hadn't thought much of the floods when they started. Roman had no trouble recalling their casual dismissal. It was only near the coast, after all. He and Remus made jokes about vacationing to kayak down the streets, and then they got worse, and then it was only near the oceans and nearby rivers, and only in the south, and then only, 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 until they were everywhere, and there was no only anymore. He remembered the day he saw water trickling down their street, despite the lack of rain for weeks. He turned to Remus and joked they could use those kayaks about now, and in the end, he hadn't really been wrong. The storms weren't treated so lightly. Those started right in the middle of the country, and they almost fell victim to the same dismissal. They're in tornado country, Roman's mom had assured him when he frowned at the news report. It's fairly common over there. Until they started spreading farther and farther every night, impossible to ignore. The floods weren't kind, but they weren't disastrous for most, just a trash can floating down the street, and at worst a car or two following behind, albeit the water damage and homes too low to ignore it. But the storms were a rude awakening. The thunder was loud, louder than any Roman had ever heard, and the lightning seemed to choose its targets with purpose. Cars, houses, telephone poles. Roman remembered lying in bed at night, listening to the rain pound against the roof, counting seconds between blinding flashes and deafening cracks. He remembered the night his father went to check the generator and Roman sang to himself as he waited for him to return. He never did. And then the storm stopped, seemingly all at once. He remembered sitting in a blanket fort with Remus. A blanket fort like they were ten again. And writing messages to each other on a notepad because their whispers couldn't be heard over the rain. And then everything was quiet. They crawled out from beneath the draped blankets and stared at the windows, at the still world beyond them. Their mom came running into the living room to pull the curtains wide, her face scarred by creases of week-long worryings, exultant as she watched the sun peek out from behind the clouds. Roman remembered patting down the sidewalk, studying the charred remains of trees and cars, of his old bike in the backyard and their picket fence. In the wake of the storm, their world was silent and burnt. They thought it ended there. The floods caused the storms, his mom had guessed. Shrugging off Remus's disbelieving scowls and Roman's confused frowns. His mom always loved sunshine, and she was just eager to embrace its return. She dismissed their complaints of evening heat, of sweltering afternoon sun, of nights too warm to sleep in. She refused to leave when Roman and Remus told her it was getting worse. Roman remembered sitting in front of her one evening as she fanned herself and read one of her dime novels, begging her to come with them to a friend's cabin where they could be safer from the heat. He remembered Remus grabbing his arm and dragging him out to the car, remembered stifling his tears the whole drive because he couldn't afford to be dehydrated, remembered a burning hope that his mom was at least happy where she went, happy in her sunshine. She wasn't at home when they returned, and they'd had to return only a few weeks after arriving at the cabin. The temperatures up north went lower and lower as the days passed, and Patton had told them his little cabin just wasn't prepared for that kind of cold. He'd be fine, he assured them. His parents had a house farther south that he could go to, but they needed to go home and be safe. 
When they arrived, the house was empty. They didn't talk about it. They didn't talk about when the temperature started dropping in their town either. They just got towels and stuffed them between the floor and the doors, insulated the windows, grabbed blankets and food and the space heaters from the shed. They hoped and prayed the cold wouldn't last as long as the others. They weren't sure they had the supplies to make it that long. But in the end, they just waited. Roman remembered being curled into a ball in a pile of blankets for hours, his legs and back cramping as he put his face between his knees in an effort to warm his frozen cheeks and nose. He and Remus were the lucky ones that time around. He heard crying in the streets one night, a night he'd never forget, howls of pain and anguish that led him to conclusions he hadn't ever wanted to imagine. When the cold passed, the relief never came. It was only fear, a trembling anticipation that gripped the heart and throat and held on tight, promising some vague terror just around the corner. But for a while, nothing came. Roman and Remus watched the skies, checked the temperatures, listened at night for thunder or waves or an unimaginable plague to tap at their windows, but the world was quiet and peaceful again. Roman remembered feeling almost hopeful. Then... One day, he saw water trickling down the street, and he felt nothing at all. Weeks, months, years passed, and the cycle returned again and again. They knew not to question it anymore. No one had answers, and no one had time to find them between the storms and heat waves and frosts. Roman watched as his neighbor's lights began to flicker off and stay off. Sometimes he'd hear crying in the street again. Sometimes it was difficult to tell if it was real or a memory. And it told him that he and Remus were one step closer to being the only ones left. The only ones alive to watch for water or count for seconds or drive up north or seal the doors. They stopped listening to those cries at night. After a while, they stopped coming anyway. Now, here, today it was morning. The neighborhood was silent. The city was silent. And deep down, he knew it was because there was no one left to make a sound. And Roman had bundled himself up in a coat to fight the oncoming chill as he sat on his front porch. He remembered his mom watching him and Remus play with the neighborhood children from the same spot. He remembered waving to his elderly neighbor a few doors down as she watered flowers in the early morning. He remembered tossing soccer balls back to the boys who lived down the street. He remembered when he saw couples jogging and people walking their dogs and kids riding their bikes down the sidewalks. He remembered when the world was bright and full of sound and people living their lives. He hoped he never remembered this antithesis. And it's here, as he's sitting on his porch in the early morning, hoping for his memories to be full of song, that the church bells started ringing. Thank you so much for listening, and thank you to Coconut Cluster for allowing me to read this fic. If you like my writing and would like to read more, I will leave a link to their Tumblr in the description. I highly recommend that you check it out. With all that said, stay safe out there, be kind to each other, and blessed be.